Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us here on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree, coming to you from the KXAN Live studio. Hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, we're going to have a conversation now about the Supreme Court's decision back in June to overturn the federal right to abortion when it struck down the landmark Roe versus Wade case. Here in Austin, that led to protests and demonstrations just like this one, both for and against abortion rights. The ruling also brought up questions about what kinds of options and resources pregnant people have. Now that many more abortion restrictions exist in Texas, some on social media are suggesting that adoption is a solution for someone who does not have access to abortion services anymore. Well, today, a story delving into that topic went live on our website, kxan.com, with this headline here. Adoption or abortion? Families and experts say it's not that simple. The reporter behind it is one of our news interns, Juliana Washburn, and she is joining us live now here in the studio to talk more about it. Juliana, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Will, for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, we are very glad to have you in the studio. And I just want to point out to everybody watching that she is going to be a senior very soon at the University of Georgia. And we're going to ask her about her future plans in just a little bit. But circling back to the story that you did, so well reported, Juliana. But tell us about what led you to look into this idea. Well, thank you so much, first of all. And that's a very good question, actually. So. When Roe v. Wade was overturned at the end of June, I, as an intern, get to go along with reporters on their stories, and I actually got to go along on a couple of stories where we were visiting um, places like crisis pregnancy centers, talking to these places about what, what we're going to do now, what are the options for women now, and I kept hearing adoption being brought up, and as I heard the, the word adoption so many times, I began to wonder, what happens after that that is offered? I mean, is it really that simple? What does it look like after someone says, oh, well, you can just place your child for adoption? So that's when I decided to work on this story and really dive deep into what comes next. Is this really that simple? I'd like to highlight one of the quotes that you included in your story, and here it is right here. It reads, it's often said quite flippantly, why don't they just choose adoption as if adoption is an easy choice? It's not. Uh, Juliana, what did you find from people there about the emotions that are involved in the adoption process, both from the biological parent and the adoptive one? That was just a striking part of working on this story for me, speaking to people who were both adopted or um, have gone through the process as an adoptive parent or who have just heard stories. Each person I talked to were emotional in some way about the process and and really what I gathered was that it's it's not simple. Um, that's that adoption with it comes so many complicated feelings that last forever um, and this can be traumatic. This can be something that people deal with the rest of their lives. Um, I also talked to someone who had gone through the process that had a good experience, but also, you know, shed light on the fact that it still is something that's extremely emotional and requires a lot of resources. And that's where that quote really kind of sums it up. It's adoption, you know, sometimes is offered as like, oh, why don't people just choose that? But I really got to see the perspective of well, it's actually really emotional. It's not that simple. You can't just say it that flippantly. Hmm. And your story really focuses on private adoption. And we should note there is obviously the public side to the foster care system. And you put out this graphic in your story and put it together really nicely and explain what the different options are in terms of, of, of adoption. Explain what those are. Yeah, so private adoption has three different options when it comes to what relationship the adoptee will have with their biological parents and the adoptive family will also have with them kind of wh what they decide and so i figured i'd put this graphic together to simplify it explain it and so there's open adoption where the adoption agency doesn't have to be involved in the communication and the the child who was placed for adoption has you know, a potentially close relationship with their biological parents and everyone's in communication. Um, and then with semi-open, they the communication goes through the adoption agency, uh, birth parents can receive updates, um, but it's not as close-knit as open. And then closed is where there's no information shared and no contact. Um, and this is really important to note, especially in Texas, because one thing I realized while working on this story is that 
open adoption is not enforceable in Texas, which means that at any time the adoptive family can cut off contact with the biological parents and that you know sheds light on the the rights that biological parents have and you know adopt open adoptions can be very beneficial so it raises the question of you know would it, would it benefit biological parents to to have an enforceable open adoption agreement hmm. It's very interesting there to point out what the law is here in Texas because some people may not even know that. Yes, yeah, that was one of the things I realized among, you know, other, I realized a lot of things throughout working on this story and that was one of the ones that were most striking to me. And one of the things someone said to me is it leaves the uh, birth mothers with virtually no rights, which was, again, another very striking emotional thing I received from someone and that just goes along with the whole theme of this story. Hmm. And since the Supreme Court's decision was announced about the Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization case uh, again in June, a lot of lawmakers and many others have pointed to the availability and resources provided by these crisis pregnancy centers. For someone who may not know what that is exactly, it gets talked about a lot as a term. What do they offer? Yeah, so crisis pregnancy centers are often faith-based um, resource centers for expectant mothers and their children, and they can provide material resources like clothes, diapers, things like that for babies, but also they can provide information and counseling. And, you know, there's a push and pull with this that I found, and it's some people really think crisis pregnancy centers are biased and that can be harmful for women, but then there's also a side to it that they do provide resources. And without, you know, access to places like Planned Parenthood, these places can be necessary. So you can read more about that on the KXAN website. In the article, I really dive deep into crisis pregnancy centers and the push and pull with that, as I said. Yeah, can you address what some of the different attitudes are that people have about these crisis pregnancy centers? Yeah, so it's I, I luckily got to talk to a crisis pregnancy center in Austin, and um, you know they are very, try very hard to be holistic and to offer unbiased services and services in general, and are just really concerned and also wanting to help women um, in terms of healthcare. But at the same time, people such as um, I talked to a couple people from adoption centers or researchers and, and social work at the University of Texas and Baylor, and they really felt that crisis pregnancy centers just can't give that that need to women to have an unbiased opinion. They because they're faith based that they aren't able to give everything that a, a woman needs, every choice that is offered to her. And so there's a huge concern there that women are led there and then kind of convinced to go through with adoption without all of the information, without being fully emotionally prepared for what's to come. Lastly, Juliana, I want to ask you about what resources you found out and learned about in this process, because there are so many questions about what's to come in the future now that Roe has been reversed. What does it look like in Texas about what resources might come for people who be can become pregnant? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest ones I found was you know, if women do not have access to abortion services, I think a huge thing I saw was that these women in general, expectant mothers, whatever decision they decide to make, if they decide to go with adoption or they decide to, you know, have their child, that they just need resources in general. And, you know, uh, these resources, they if they choose adoption, it can come through the adoption centers. And in that case, someone mentioned ongoing counseling for the uh, emotional impact of that, that the process can have. That would be beneficial. Um, enforcement of open adoption would be beneficial. Um, and that's just focusing on adoption. But like I said, you know, crisis pregnancy centers have resources, but again, there's that push and pull with them. Um, so someone mentioned, you know, they would recommend someone going to uh, Planned Parenthood or a place that has a um, social worker there um, to give them a full view of what their options are. Um, yeah, I, I dive deep into that too at the end of my story, so you can definitely check that out on the website as well. And that is what we're going to push right now. If you'd like to read more in depth about what Juliana has reported, 
as one of our news interns, an incredibly intelligent one who put this story together uh, that you can find it right now on our homepage on KXAN.com. Now, before we go, Juliana, I do want to ask you, because you're going to be a senior at the University of Georgia, as I mentioned at the very top of this conversation, what are your future plans? Oh, I am so excited for my senior year. I just plan to make the most of it. I'm mm -hmm. diving deep into things um, when it comes to activities. So I will be working at the Red and Black newspaper, um, which is this newspaper I've worked on my whole college career. So I'll be diving deep into that, but also I'll get the chance to dive deep into broadcast and I'll spend a whole semester working as an MMJ for um, my school broadcast studio and I'll get to produce stories about every day which is so awesome um, as I look forward to a career in journalism. Well we look forward to having you come back here one day. <laughs> yes I would love that so much I love it here. All right well Juliana Washburn thank you so much again for your story wonderful job uh, it's hard to believe that this came from one of our interns but that just goes, goes to show you the caliber of intern that we bring in here to KX and so thank you again for your work. Thank you so much. I appreciate your kind words. All right, everybody. Well, again, if you want to read Juliana's story, it is available on KXAN.com as well as the KXAN News mobile app that you can download onto your smartphone if you haven't done so already. We want to thank you again for watching. I'm Will Dupree in the KXAN Live Studio. We'll see you back here another time, everybody. Hope you all stay safe and healthy out there. Take care.